What's up guys? I'm Eddie of Open Pinoy and today we are going to talk about the meaning of letters on the processors. But before we start, please subscribe on our channel and hit the notification bell and be updated to our next content. So without further ado, let's go! First, let's talk about the processor names. So Intel naming scheme starts with the processor's brand. The most common Intel processor names begin with Intel Core. Intel Core processor series includes a brand modifier before the remaining parts of the model number. Intel Pentium and Intel Celeron processors do not use this naming convention. Next is Generation Indicator. When a processor has a 4 or 5 digits, the first one or 2 digits represent the generation. Next to it is the SKU numeric digits. A higher SKU within otherwise identical processor brands and generations will generally have more features. The last part is the product line suffix. The product line suffix at the end of each Intel processor name lets you know what each processor is generally meant for. Some computers have Intel chips without any letters. Those are standard base chip models. So let's start with letter K suffix. Intel processor with K suffix are usually the fastest, with higher clock speed than the standard chips without a letter in Intel's mainstream chips. It also means that chip is unlocked, where its clock speed can be overclocked by a user for extra performance. Note that Intel processor with K suffix also need unlock Intel chipset motherboard like a Z790 chipset for Intel i9-3900K. Intel X are the highest performing chips. They are extremely chips which are unlocked like K series. They are often the most expensive chips and are usually used by gamers and high-end workstation computers. They also have higher core counts and higher base and turbo clock speeds than K series CPUs. The K series, on the other hand, is intended for use in gaming PCs and enthusiast level builds, but they generally have lower core counts compared to X series CPUs. F requires discrete graphics, meaning you will need a dedicated graphics card on this processor to work. Some models are designated with KF, which means they lack integrated graphics and unlock for overclocking. Intel processor with T suffix still fit in a standard LGA desktop socket, but they are low power. So you often see them in small form factor desktops or all-in-one PC which have a smaller power supplies and less aggressive cooling. S suffix from earlier Intel core generation means performance optimized lifestyle, a little lower performance in exchange for lower power draw. But the S from the latest Intel generation that can be found on the i9-3900KS means special edition. Both the Core i9-3900KS and the Core i9-3900K are basically identical CPUs. Both processors feature 8 performance cores, 16 efficiency cores, and a total of 32 threads. The real difference between the two CPUs is the clock speeds and the price. The U suffix means ultra low power. This letter often can see on laptops and other mobile devices as well as the Y suffix which means extremely low power efficient. Both are focused on saving battery life than on performance. They have lower clock speeds, lesser cores, and a very low TDP like the i7 10510Y which only have 7 watts TDP. Intel has an M suffix, which means that a chip is mobile, but currently it's only being used on Xeon chips for mobile workstations. U and M are both designations for Intel processors, but they are used for different classes of processors. U processors are typically used in laptops and are designed to be power efficient, while M processors are used in mobile workstations and are designed for high performance. In general, U processors have lower clock speeds and fewer cores than M processors, making them more suited for everyday tasks such as web browsing and office work, while M processors are better for demanding tasks such as video editing and 3D rendering. The H suffix means high performance graphics and it's designated to Intel's high-end mobile segment that consume more power, meaning the H-series CPUs are only found in high-performance laptops. So currently, the CPUs in this series are i5-13500H, i7-13800H, and the i9-13900H. You will also find a Q suffix that means quad-core, which you will often see on earlier generation of high-end laptops with an HQ suffix. You can also find the HK suffix on higher-end laptops in higher generation. HK suffix denotes an unlocked, high-powered laptop processor that allows for overclocking. The G suffix means the chip has a built-in graphics processor. Most of Intel chips come with basic built-in graphics processors so you can display something on your monitor without a separate graphic card. But the Intel with G suffix come with a more powerful graphics processor for more power-hungry apps and games. G1, G7, this designation signifies the level of performance 
of the CPU's integrated graphics solution. The higher the number, the better the graphics performance. The A suffix on an Intel processor typically indicates that the processor is designed for embedded system. Embedded systems are typically used in specialized devices such as industrial automation, medical equipment, and military applications. Embedded processors often have low power consumption, smaller form factors, and longer lifespans than processors designed for general purpose computing. However, the specific features of a processor with an E suffix can vary depending on the specific model and generation. When choosing an Intel processor, it's important to consider the task you will be using it for. If you are a casual user who only needs a computer for basic tasks, the entry-level options such as Celeron and Pentium are suitable. If you are a gamer or video editor, you will want to choose one of the higher-end options such as i7 or i9. The Xeon processors are designed for servers and workstations, so they are not necessary for the average users. In summary, the letters after an Intel processor model number indicates its performance and capabilities. Understanding what these letters mean can help you choose the right processor for your needs. And that's it for today's video guys. I hope you learned something. And please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you will be updated. See ya!